Hello and welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend. It's been a remarkably wet start to April following a wet March and a wet winter. We've talked so much about low pressure during recent weeks and months, we might have forgotten what high pressure looks like. But this is an area of high pressure and it's heading our way for the weekend. But before we get to the weekend, one last area of low pressure will squeeze in ahead of that high to bring some outbreaks of rain into Scotland. First thing Thursday, and that rain will topple south into northern England, North Wales by the afternoon. Ahead of the rain, some sunshine still lingering across southern parts on Thursday afternoon, feeling quite pleasant with 15 Celsius there in the south, but feeling less than pleasant, I think, further north where the wind and the rain tend to uh, stick around through much of Thursday afternoon. Some brighter spells for Northern Ireland, mostly dry here. 12 Celsius. The rain continues on its journey southwards on Thursday night, but it tends to fizzle away as it pushes south and it is followed by showers, blustery showers, as the wind picks up from the north northwest. Of course, with the wind in place on Friday morning, it's going to be a generally frost free start, but it's not going to feel warm on Friday because of that wind coming from the north northwest, especially down the North Sea coast where the wind will be strongest. Gales in the North Sea along the coast, that strong wind making it feel fairly cold, 11, 12 Celsius at best. Further west, the wind not quite as strong, some sunny spells coming through for western parts, mostly dry, 15 Celsius. But, well, there will be a few showers developing, most likely East Midlands, East Anglia and the southeast during the middle part of the day. They disappear overnight and then well, we've got high pressure moving in, that high moving in from the west will dominate things throughout the weekend to bring much more settled weather, not entirely dry, nor entirely sunny, nor entirely warm. There are some regional differences to talk about this weekend, but it's certainly going to be, bring a welcome relief from all the very wet weather we've seen through April so far. Nevertheless, there will be some weather fronts toppling in over the top of that high, and this one in particular will bring some outbreaks of light rain to the far north of Scotland, Orkney and Shetland, on Saturday itself. Highs of 8 Celsius there for Shetland, 11 for Stornoway. Elsewhere, much sunnier conditions prevail throughout Saturday. Bit of a chill in the air first thing, a frost in sheltered western parts. But by the afternoon, the sunshine will feel very pleasant. Whatever the temperatures are saying, in that sunshine with lighter winds compared with Friday, it's going to feel lovely, I suspect, after all the wet weather we've seen recently. Nevertheless, there will be some variable amounts of cloud coming into eastern and northern parts with those weather fronts. And the weather front in the far north on Saturday tends to topple over the high and come down the North Sea to bring some light outbreaks of rain to eastern parts of the country on Sunday, especially later in the day. And an increase in cloud cover towards the east, but we'll keep some sunny spells going towards the west. And with that sunshine and with light winds in the west, Highs of 16, 17, could even get 18 Celsius, somewhere like Western Scotland, Western parts of Northern Ireland. That's going to feel very pleasant indeed compared with the weather this year so far. This shows the 24 hour rainfall totals throughout Saturday. White means no rainfall expected, and that covers most of the UK. But the outbreaks of light rain that I mentioned in the north of Scotland showing up there, and some light outbreaks of rain for parts of East Anglia. Not very much really, the lowest colour there on the key and the lowest colour also more prevalent across the far north as well as eastern parts and central parts of the UK on Sunday. This is light and patchy rain that could just uh, spread its way slowly westwards as the weather fronts, those weak fronts, topple in from the north and northwest. <clears throat> Now, there'll also be an east-west split in temperatures this weekend, especially on Sunday, with, uh, well, above average temperatures expected across parts of central and western Scotland, as I mentioned, 17, 18 Celsius, and western parts of Northern Ireland as well. That's uh, more than three degrees above average. More than three degrees below average, though, for parts of eastern England, because we've got this uh, northeasterly airflow and Temperatures limited to 11 to 13 Celsius. So feeling cool in the wind off that North Sea in the east, feeling warm with light winds towards the northwest in any sunny spells. And a similar temperature pattern on Monday. That easterly wind picks up a bit more into the east of England, so feeling quite fresh on the North Sea coast, but 
feeling quite pleasant, I think, across western parts of the UK where we've got temperatures up to 16 or 17 Celsius or so. This is what the jet stream's doing on Monday. It's sort of slicing central and eastern parts of the UK in two, and really it's in this area that we're likely on Monday to see some showers, that jet stream causing some uh, rising air in the atmosphere. But further northwest, we're closer to higher pressure. That higher pressure, though, is starting to ebb away slightly from the UK. It's doing something we would call retrogression. So normally, weather systems move from west to east. This one's moving east to west. It's moving towards the northwest of the UK. And to explain why, we've got to rewind the clock and head over to the other side of the Atlantic on Friday. And this is how things are looking. Now, this is the stage at which we've got the high pressure to the west of the UK moving in, moving eastwards into the UK. And that's because of this dip in the jet stream, what we call a trough, and that's helping to push the western side of the high upwards and extend it across the UK. But then that trough by Sunday tends to cut off and become detached from the main flow of the jet stream, which you can see over North America there. That's going to become the main driving force. And with this southward south um, southerly flow of the jet stream coming out of North America, that's going to build pressure further west across the Atlantic. So as you can see, it's this pulse in the jet stream here that tends to rise pressure to the northwest of the UK instead of over the UK. And that's where we end up for Monday the 22nd of April. Higher pressure to the northwest. And that weather pattern holds out into Tuesday, this is 84% probability, high pressure, close to Iceland, in between Scotland and Iceland there, with a generally light to moderate northeast of the airflow across the UK. Similar conditions to Monday. Chance of a few showers towards the south and southeast. Chance of some decent sunny spells here and there, but variable amounts of cloud. And temperatures close to average. And this is for Thursday. This is the most likely weather pattern. This is the second most likely and this is the third most likely, but they're all showing the same sort of theme. Higher pressure towards the northwest of the UK, an easterly or northerly airflow across the country, and plenty of settled weather. Much less rain than we've seen recently, but not entirely dry because we'll still see some showers affecting eastern and southeastern parts of the UK at times. And as far as the temperatures are concerned, well, there's a bit of uncertainty about this aspect of the forecast. This shows the temperature anomalies through next week from the Met Office output, and it's suggesting most of the country will be slightly above average as far as temperatures are concerned, but there's a bit of a cold uh, indication there for eastern parts, which you'd expect with an east or northeasterly wind. Now, this is the output from the European model, and it shows below average temperatures throughout next week. And what we think is this discrepancy between the models is due to cloud cover. So with the Met Office model, it's showing up a bit more cloud, we think, for next week, and therefore overnight temperatures are less low. Whereas the European model has clearer skies and a higher chance of overnight frosts in places across the UK, hence the below average temperatures. But I suspect it'll be a bit of a mix of the two. There'll be some clear spells, variable amounts of cloud. At times, especially across western parts, the skies will be clear enough and the winds will be light enough overnight to lead to a touch of frost in places. But by day, of course, with some sunny spells and an increasingly strong sun, it's going to feel pleasant enough with temperatures in the mid-teens in the west, but limited a bit more along the North Sea coast. So temperatures not far from average is what I'm getting at, but could see some overnight frosts whilst conversely daytime in the sunshine feeling very pleasant. Now, this shows a wider view of the temperature and this is really important to explain why next week's pattern is lasting so long, why it's so similar throughout the week and potentially longer than that. This shows a polar view, so this is the North Pole, there's the UK, and much of the rest of Europe. This shows the European output for uh, European model output for next week. Cold air over much of Europe, but we've got these warm blobs. So we've got one here over North America, just to the east of the Rockies. We've got another one here over Asia, just to the east of the Urals, and one to the east of the Himalayas. So we've got these three well-defined warm anomalies, and they coincide with three 
well-defined ridges in the atmosphere. This shows the pressure anomaly at around about 18,000 feet above sea level. And over North America, we've got this higher than normal pressure and just to the east of the Urals and just to the east of the Himalayas, higher than normal pressure. One, two, three. We've also got another two, one in the Atlantic and one in the Pacific. So there's five of these ridges, something we call a wave number five pattern. And this is quite significant as we move into spring and summer because it can be self-sustaining. When we see these wave number five patterns develop, we tend to think they're going to stick around for some time. The reason they're self-sustaining is because when you get higher pressure over these continental areas to the east of higher ground, and you get an increasingly strong sun at this time of year heating that area, then the high pressure as temperatures rise can become self-sustaining. And this high to the east of the Rockies as well as the one to the east of the Urals and the east of the Himalayas becomes quite strong and sits there. And you get a corresponding trough or low pressure just to the east of that and a corresponding ridge to the east of that. And so this whole pattern then becomes stuck what it means for us is for next week we've got this higher pressure to the northwest of the UK that becomes stuck because of the potentially self-sustaining pattern that we've got over North America with the higher pressure to the east of the Rockies and those higher temperatures to the east of the Rockies really helping to sustain that higher pressure for some time. And so when we look beyond next week and the similar sort of chart here showing higher than normal pressure into the start of May over North America, a corresponding lower than normal pressure over the Atlantic, and then higher than normal pressure to the northwest of the UK. So once this pattern develops, this wave number five pattern can become self-sustaining and it can lead to certain weather systems becoming stuck in the spring and summer months. And so just to give you an indication of what that might mean for our weather at the end of April, this is the last day of April and we've got a similar setup. An area of high pressure dominating things to the west or northwest of the UK. Its position will of course determine the precise weather we get from place to place in the UK and that at the moment is still open to doubt whether it's a little bit further northwest and allows showers to come in from the uh, continent or from the east or whether it's more centred over the UK as in these scenarios. So those will be the main uncertainties as we end April but Either way, the second half of April, oh, almost dropped it, second half of April looks significantly less wet compared with the first half. Bye-bye.